Today we're going to talk about direct variations. You're going to learn today how to recognize a direct variation, what is a direct variation, and what is a constant of variation. Okay. So the following up top are the graphs of direct variations. Take a look and see what do they have in common? What do you think makes them a direct variation? Look at the graphs on the bottom. Those are not direct variations. How are they different from the graphs on the top? So the graph of a direct variation goes through the origin. So its y-intercept is 0, 0. Okay. And it is a straight line. Okay, There's no curve. There's nothing. It just goes right through the origin, and it's 0, 0. So direct variations are described by the equation y equals kx. We say that y varies directly as x. And in the equation y equals kx, k is our constant of variation, which just is another fancy word for slope. So when we looked at our examples and our non-examples for equations, notice that they each have a y and an x, okay? But they don't have a constant, okay? They don't have an exponent. So those things mean that they are not a direct variation. So a direct variation has a constant, it doesn't have an exponent, and the variables are x and y, and the variables aren't multiplied. Okay. So we want to name the constant of variation for each equation and then write the equation for the direct variation. So remember, our constant of variation is k, or it is a slope. Okay. So if I look at this, the nice thing is, is my point is always 0, 0. So my rise is 3 and my run is 4. So it's always going to be our y value of another point on the line over the x value. So in this case, k is going to be equal to 3 fourths. When I ask you to write an equation, I'm asking you to write what is the specific equation for this graph, not just the general y equals kx but the actual equation. So y equals kx is our pattern. We keep our y, our k is 3 fourths, and then times x. So this is our equation, y equals 3 fourths x. Here's another example. You've got two points, but remember shown here, we can still use the 0, 0. So k is my y value of my ordered pair over my x value. If I pick the first one, k is going to be 2.5 over 1, or 2.5. If I pick the second one, it's negative 2.5 over negative 1, which is still 2.5, so it's not going to change. So our equation, we just substitute in k. So you get y equals 2.5 or 2.5x. And there's your equation. So it's just kind of a subbing things in. Now we want to suppose that y varies directly as x, and we want to write this direct variation. In order to do this, the first thing we have to do is find k. Okay, so k is going to be this y over this x. So k is going to be 9 over negative 3, which is negative 3. So then we want to write the equation. The equation is y equals kx this substitutes in for the k, so y equals negative 3x. 
So that's the first part of the equation. Boom. Okay. The second part says solve. So we want to know what x is when y is 6. Okay. So when y is 6, we just substitute in. 6 equals negative 3 times x, and we divide by negative 3. So x is negative 2. So that's the second part of the question. So the equation is y equals negative 3x, and x is negative 2 when y is 6. So we found k. And we write the equation, then we find x when y is equal to 6. So here and here. All right, so just another example. The first thing we do is find k. So remember, k equals y over x. So in this case, k is negative 4.8 over negative 1.6, which is positive 3. One of the easier things to do if you don't have a calculator is we can move this decimal over so it's actually negative 48 over negative 16, which is 3. Okay, so there's our k. Our equation is y equals kx, k is 3, so y equals 3x. So if I'm going to find x when y is negative 24, I'm just going to substitute in negative 24 equals 3x. If I divide by 3, x equals negative 6. By the way, even though I didn't show an example of this, you can also find x, or y when you know x. You should be able to figure that out. All you got to do is sub in. All right, for this word problem, I want you to understand that we say that y varies directly to x or as x. So in this case, we have Charles' law states that a constant pressure volume of gas varies directly as its temperature T. So V varies directly, we gotta have our K, as its temperature T. Okay. So we wanna write a direct variation that relates those variables. So we have a volume of four cubic feet and a temperature of 200 degrees. So our K, if we take this equation and solve for k, we're just dividing both sides by t. So k is equal to v divided by t. So now our volume is 4, and our temperature is 200. Okay. So our equation, if I reduce that, that reduces to 1 50th. So our <clears throat> volume the equation is one over fifty T. Now we know that if we're going to graph that our volume of four cubic feet, so we have four cubic feet to two hundred degrees temperature. So we have a point of two hundred degrees. Calvin and volume of four. And we know every direct variation goes through zero, zero. So here's our graph. All right. So we want to find the volume of the same gas at 250 degrees Kelvin. So we're going to use that formula. Volume equals 150 T. Okay. And volume is at temperature of 250, so volume is going to be 1 over 50 times 250. So 250 divided by 50 is going to be 5, so our volume is 4. Okay. 
So hopefully today you learned that direct variation is a linear function in the form y equals kx. How you can recognize a direct variation, remember our graph, we're going to take a straight line through 0, 0. And we want to know what the constant of variation is, which is a fancy word for slope. Have a math-tastic day.